This is a familiar corner in Granville and a fairly busy one, the corner of Cherry Valley Road and Newark Granville Road. It's also the southwest corner of the Munson Springs Preserve, or at least the full 57 and a half acre property, which the village of Granville has purchased. And we're working on how, what part of it will be a preserve and how other uses might relate to it. My name's Jeff Gill, and I've done a bunch of tours for uh, village council members and our Munson Springs uh, uh, study commission that the council has put together to look into options and uses and uh, what uh, historic and cultural resources we have here. And uh, some people haven't been able to go on those tours, so we thought, well, we'll just give them a chance to do it by video if necessary. We're right here opposite Facklers, and that hedgerow really bisects or cuts in half between the left or west half that we're looking at and the east half on the other side of it of the lower 20 acres and up that slope you see ahead is a, an elevated kind of a plateau the southeast corner really of the Welsh Hills and that's the part that we're fairly certain will definitely be a preserve and hopefully a park with access and the chance to tell you some stories there but while we're here on the corner, let me explain to you what the historic significance of this location is. Starting with the corner of Newark Granville Road, also uh, in olden times Centerville Street, heading from Granville over towards Newark through an, a settlement at Klaus Lane that had been called Centerville, hence Centerville Street. But uh, it also branches off here to what becomes Cherry Valley Road, although it dead ends now. But this corner is of significance, not just for Granville or Granville Township, but for Licking County. Because in the spring of 1808, in that field over there, essentially was the legal beginning of Licking County. In 1803, when the state of Ohio was first established, we were part of Fairfield County. And uh, before that, actually, uh, in the old Northwest Territory, we we're part of Washington County, which still exists down around Marietta. But then Fairfield County was subdivided out and it was decided in 1808 that Licking County should be separated from the top third, basically, of Fairfield County. And our first session of the Licking County Common Police Court, you know, we have a courthouse at the center of our county, at the heart of our county seat in Newark. The courts are the origin really of each county in terms of governance. And that first court session was gonna be in a tavern that was right there where that woodlot is. But too many people showed up, plus they had three judges and a bailiff and some other officials. So they went across the road under a shady tree on the southwest corner of what's now Newark Granville Road and Cherry Valley Road. And they had that first court session. We began right there, our first courthouse, if you will, in that field. Two years later, the 1810 house was built, and uh, the 1810 house was a noted historic structure until about 1987 when it was uh, torn down. Some of the parts of it are still in storage uh, for possible historic interpretation in a time yet to come, but one of our earlier houses, no longer there. It's really just the woodlot that surrounds that location. Let me jump back though, before 1810, before 1808 and the founding of the county and talk about our first history here in Granville Township. And that was really just to the left, to the west of this 57 and a half acre parcel, but connected to the springs that are right up along, if you follow the tree line, which is the western border, up that slope a little and back in brush too thick for me to get to with this short video, are some very strong, lovely, natural springs coming out of the layers of sandstone and shale that make up the Welsh Hills. And that uh, after 1992 was capped and drains back into Raccoon Creek right next to Route 16. But that spring had attracted attention from Native Americans for over 10,000 years. We'll get to that in a second. But the first uh, European American settlers, and they were connected loosely to the Welsh, who of course in 1802 would settle further up and get these hills to our north called the Welsh Hills. But uh, John and Lily Jones were the first settlers to overwinter within Granville Township. 
and a year and a half later she would have a baby and then tragically died, though the baby survived and so the Joneses left, but the settlement continued. There was a settler who came in right behind John and Lily Jones and their three kids, and that was Patrick Cunningham, whose cabin is really the second and continuing occupant of Granville Township, was a little further up on that slope, but within the bounds of Munson Springs Preserves. So let me head straight on back. This has been mowed once. Not quite sure how even my passage will be, and I'll have to pause here occasionally. You'll see some interesting plants starting to pop up here, like the, uh, the pinkish, and I, you would call them berries. They're fruiting bodies, although they don't look really big. A kind of grain, if you will. Knotweed or smartweed was something that was a fall food stuff for Native Americans in the early and middle woodlands, what we call the Adena and Hopewell periods. And of course, the Hopewell period, or the Native Americans who built the earthworks just uh, two miles east of us, what we call the Newark Earthworks. But we have found, just adjoining this area, where now the Aaronwood housing development is, but before that, Herb and Frank Murphy let archaeologists do a pretty thorough study of the whole area that's now Village Green and Aaronwood and the uh, houses up on the heights as well, and we found a number of, well, habitation sites. This is how archaeologists talk. We can't call it a village. We're not sure if it's a great house, but we found structures. Something that's generally referred to as a habitation site is the uh, so-called Murphy site, which is very well documented in the archaeological literature. And before we stopped with the Murphy site, we uh, came over and surveyed this field and we found indications. And while it was farmed in the years after the housing development was built, people like me would come over here after the plowing and after the rain, and especially on the brow of a low slope like this, we'd find flint flakes. Not what you'd call arrowheads, not diagnostic artifacts, but a lot of worked flint. Further reminders of how people lived and worked here 2,000 years ago. Well, since the village of Granville purchased this parcel, knowing about the, the Jones and the Cunningham history in 1800 and 1801 and 1802 and the Welsh history just behind these hills to the north, starting in 1802, and then the settlement which began the village of Granville in 1805, well, they camped here the night before they went on into the heart of Granville itself. You've probably seen the, uh, the monument that looks like a tree stump where they cut a tree down and somebody jumped on top of it and delivered a sermon. Well, that was in November of 1805, the night before, the last night of their journey from Granville, Massachusetts and Granby, Connecticut, they set up camp, well, right here in this field. And the Munson family especially loved what they saw. And after things were established, it was the Munsons who purchased this and all the fields to the west and beyond to the south and built the Munson farm, hence the Munson Springs. Also, uh, in another 20 years, the Munson farmhouse, which after 1990 was actually jacked up and transported oh, not even uh, three quarters of a mile east of here on Newark Granville Road, the heart of the Welsh Hills School. But when the village of Granville purchased this last year, we uh, made arrangements in the spring to have a magnetic survey to take the study we'd done back with the Murphy site back in the 1980s and early 1990s and look around. And one of the things the mag survey showed was another one of those large houses, or at least the hint of one. Uh, archaeologically, we can't say for sure it's a feature, but a very large rectangular feature with uh, the narrower end pointing to the southeast. It sure looks like a great house to me. It's going to take a little more archaeology for us to confirm what is actually here. But uh, parts of it 
look very similar to me to stuff that we found down around Chillicothe, places like the Browns Bottom site and uh, other locations near Tremper Mound that make me think we've really got to check this out, see what's located here, see what's buried here. Uh, could be simple cultural artifacts, could be more. The other thing the MAG survey found though, was that over here in the work that was done by the last person to own the site before it was sold with uh, a generous donation, I might add, to reduce the price to the village of Granville, that they logged those upper terraces I showed you from back at the road, just at the top of the hill ahead of us. And at the bottom, they kind of build a, an impoundment, a way to manage the runoff water from the now denuded slope. Well, when we did the magnetic survey, we ran right into what looked like a perfect circle. Now, in a magnetic survey, that kind of circle, when on the ground above, there's nothing to indicate it, could mean one of two things. It could mean that there was a circle here that was plowed down. It could mean that there was a ditch that was filled in. Either way, the remnant of that circle left this very precise magnetic shadow here in this area, kind of extending south about 50 feet and around just touching that uh, hedgerow and just touching the edge of that impoundment. We've got to do a little archaeological work here. Now, there are other features between here and that woodlot that's the 1910 site, all of them smaller, more discreet. And there's a couple on the eastern half of this lower 20 acres that also will have to be investigated, not quite as much as what we found over here. I'm going to stop this video, go to the top of the hill, tell you just a little bit more about Munson Springs.